This is the kilowatt model number P4400.01, a manufactured by P3 International. And I've used this thing for many years. And I've recently upgraded to this unit, which I can't remember the name of. I was gonna take this one apart first because I wanted to see how it compares to something that I know is a compliant design, but I don't have the proper tools yet. So that one will be coming. We'll be getting those bits and opening that one up later. But right now, let's take a look at this one because it opens up with just a regular Phillips driver. There is two features that this new one has that I prefer over the kilowatt. One is that it has a backlit display and the other is that it goes down to 0.01 kilowatt hours. This has the advantage of being ETL listed both for Canada and the United States. And so it's less likely to burn my house down. This one is not, it just has the CE markings. You have to reach out to them and see what testing they've done or have not done. So let's take a look at this one. Just three Phillips screws that are holding it together or holding the enclosure together. And I'm expecting that because this thing is ETL listed and conforms to UL 61010-1 and the relevant dash twos, that there's some kind of thermal protection in here. I know it beeps when it goes into overload, which I've overloaded this thing a couple of times, and you wouldn't want to be putting on a 20 amp breaker and loading it up to 2000 watts and overloading this thing and causing it to get melty. So let's take a look inside. Uh, everything's unscrewed. It seems like it wants to come apart, but it's, oh, okay. It was just, oh, there were little slots in there for creepage that are molded right into the back of this housing. And you can see right there, there are these little channels to keep the appropriate creepage distance between line and ground and neutral and ground. And you can see that right there on the circuit board, there's the, there's where the two pieces of plastic slide in to provide that proper creepage distance. So it looks like we have a two board construction and there's like a wire to wire, board to board interface using a wire strip that's soldered to both boards. This one is held in by the connections that go through the board to hold the molded part on this side holds this board in between the back and the front. So let's pull on this, see if we can get it out without bright. Oh, there it goes. That came out really nicely. So on this side, this thing has been plugged in, in a very long time, but let's just make sure it's actually discharged. Yeah, it is. So on this side, we have basically the main star of the show, which is this pass through from the plug on one side through to the connected load. And what this does is it derives a little power supply for itself through a capacitive dropper along the right side here. This is the bleeder resistor for that capacitive dropper. It has a fuse on it, which is great for the its, its supply, protects if there's any kind of internal fault that it would pop this fuse. Rated 0.2 amps, so not much going on there. I think there's a current limiting resistor also here, like a power resistor to try to prevent that, the inrush from causing this fuse to pop. It looks like there's some limited rectification going on. Uh, it doesn't really need anything special, so it might just be halfway rectified. Yeah, halfway rectified, and there's a big smoothing capacitor here that's rated 35 volts, 100 microfarad. We have a thermal fuse rated 15 amps a C fuse. It says C1812. These prongs could pull out. They're not held captive by the printed circuit board, which I do find a little strange. If the solder joints were to fail, you don't want two pins coming through and you're able to pull this out. So most modern power supplies, things like that, that have a plug connected to a printed circuit board have the U-shape interface that's soldered in place so that if everything were to fail, you got a cold joint or whatever, you couldn't pull this back out again. It would just stay in place. It'd be wobbly, but it would stay in place and not stay in the wall. The ground lug is riveted through, and you can see it on this side, to the receiver end where you'd be plugging in the load to continue the ground from whatever's plugged into it out to the load. Same thing with the load side. The clips to receive the plug, they don't have a U-shaped connection point on them. They just have two points that are going through the printed circuit board and then being soldered to. So, if there was a cold joint there, it's the mechanical securement is reliant upon these 
having a good solder connection. So that's a bit of a disappointment. I've plugged into a bunch of stuff and I haven't had any problems with it. I think I bought this in 2018. So this might be about between four and five years old. But anyways, the circuit layout is good. Not great, but good. You got the shunt there that's going between on the, it's the neutral side. It doesn't really matter because it's gonna be the line side on one side of the sine wave. It does, it tells you the thermal fuse rating right there on the circuit board. That's awesome. There's a F1, 15 amp, 250 volt, 99 degrees Celsius. And they even show here that this fuse, F2, I mean, they tell you 0.2 amp, 250 volt. So if you were to pop the thermal fuse or the, I don't know why you'd pop the main power supply fuse, but if you had weird voltage going into it, perhaps or something like that, you know, it's nice to know you can, re you can at least replace the thermal fuse and the fuse itself. Let's dig in a little further. I feel like what's going on here is we've got power coming off of this to power the main circuitry. There's six wires? Yeah, <laughs> this is my guess. Six wires, two are for the power supply, and then the remaining four are for the derived voltage reference and current reference to provide the brains of this an appropriately scaled voltage and current waveform. To, yeah, these diodes definitely go off to two pins on here. Anyways, it's scaled down to a lower voltage that the microcontroller can work with on its analog and digital converters for current and voltage measurement. I think they both reference back to this ground, so they each are, are taking up two pairs for current, ground, voltage, ground. I'm guessing on the order because I'm not going to reverse engineer this whole board. But let's take a look at the rest of this. So far, I'm impressed. They're all, are these all the same screws? These two may not be. But if they are, that would be awesome. It makes putting things back together so much easier. And yes, they're all the same screws. So I'm gonna pull this board out. Oh, before I do, there's the little beeper here that beeps when you're selecting things and then also beeps when it overloads. Crystal oscillator, and I think this is a shot key for voltage regulation or, or voltage protection. And oh, there's a zebra's. Cool, but also I wanna be careful with that. We got a little membrane button strip there. We'll take that off. It's just your standard membrane button with the little carbon pads to make contact with the copper traces for the various functions. Menu, up, down, enter, output. Which is not at all what it says on the display here. It says volt, amp, watt, hertz, <laughs> kilowatt hour. That's kind of hilarious. I wonder if this is reference from some other design. I am gonna pull this off because I can realign it pretty easily. Ooh, there we go. Let's just, but I wanna see. It's probably just a, oh, it's a little foam pad that holds the LCD in. And then at the very top, you got the zebra strip. I'm gonna plop that back into the enclosure so that when I put this back together, it'll, it'll work all right. It's not a very populated zebra strip. You got just the locations for all the segments and for the various indicators. Looks like it has an option for an actual discrete IC, a packaged IC, but it's just got the blob chip on there. And we've got some other stuff on here. So it looks like one might be just EEPROM. Who would it be using that for? One looks like an op amp and the other might be EEPROM. Yeah, maybe it uses this for like storing control functions like overload, beep tones, things like that, that it would use that this chip does not have because it's just providing the, handling the buttons of the display and then the analog to digital conversion is being done there because I don't think it's being done externally. This op amp might be doing something to help with determinations of power factor or things like that. And then there's just some voltage regulation down here being done. It's pretty straightforward. It has no isolation, which is fine because you're relying on the enclosure to provide the safety isolation, which it has a nice plastic enclosure and it is, got membrane buttons that are very long and recessed so that when you're pressing on buttons and things like that, you're not actually at any risk of really touching anything that is line voltage referenced. So, I mean, it's nice that it separates it for voltage purposes to reduce the voltage to this. So there's not a fire hazard, but as far as shock, you're, this is all referenced back to mains AC. It's an interesting design. It'll be interesting to compare this to this guy when I can get it opened up with the proper driver bit That'll be coming soon. I've used this thing for many years. It's been a trusty tool for voltage and current and power monitoring as well as power factor, frequency measurements and cumulative power consumption. But for smaller loads and things like that, when you wanna get down into the thousandth of a kilowatt hour, 
and this one only goes to the hundredth of a kilowatt hour. So it's uh, it's good for larger stuff. It works really well and it does what it's supposed to do. It does it reliably. And the circuit board is pretty well laid out and the design at least has some user serviceability if you are so inclined, if you needed to replace the thermal fuse, if you overloaded it by chance on like a 20 amp branch. But that's it. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Take care.